it's Jason here at the Centre for Computing History. I am here with Adrian Graham, um, probably more commonly known to many of you as Binary Dinosaur. Um, thanks very much for coming along. No problem. Um, and uh, we've got something pretty special to, to show you. Um, we have here um, a Commodore 65. And I did say that right. It is a Commodore 65, not a 64. Um, it looks a little bit different. Um, Adrian, can you tell us what it is and why it exists? Well, technically, it's the 64DX, right. which was the Commodore back then went to reusing model numbers because the, the DX64 already existed as the dual drive SX64. Mm -hmm. But because the SX64 was the portable that was the portable one with the handle at the front. Yeah. Yep, right. Rocking horse poo. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because this was supposed to be a logical extension of the 64, they said, well, when it, when it works, it does actually say 64DX right. development system. Mm -hmm. But sadly, it doesn't work at the minute. Nah. Nah. That's <clears throat> a shame. Yeah. So, I mean, this was apparently, I mean, the story's a bit mixed up in it, really. I think mean, time has changed things. Well, um, and it was supposed to be a successor to the Commodore 64. Um, came out in 1990 or 91, something like that? It was, it was first mooted in 89. Right, okay. Magazines were having pencil drawings of it, but the, it didn't really appear until 91. Right. Okay. It sort of appeared and disappeared in the same year, which is a, <laughs> which is a shame. And, 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 but by that time, the, the Amiga was already out. Yeah. Um, we had the Commodore 64. Yeah. Lovely, loads of software for it. Um, Commodore 64 was well long in the tooth, yeah. and people who had people who had 64s had gone to Amiga, uh, STs, Amiga yeah, 500s. And stuff, yeah. I had an Amiga 500. Mm -hmm. So for this to appear, you sort of ask why, because it's it was the idea behind it was they were going to build on 10 years of Commodore 64 history. Mm -hmm. The whole back catalogue of software. The whole that back was out catalogue. There. Yeah. But unfortunately, they already had that with the Commodore 128. That mm -hmm. had a Commodore 64 built into it, so that just worked. Go 64. This emulated a 64. Right. And because of the slight change in, it doesn't have a 6502 in it, it has a, a modified 65EC02, mm -hmm. which became known as the 4510. That's a 16 bit processor. Yeah. Um, no. No, it's still eight bit, is it? No, it must be actually. I think, yeah. It's got to be. I think it is. Pretty Nothing, sure. Nothing's actually. Nothing's actually said. All right. That it's a sixteen bit processor. Right. But. Okay. That's something we can check. Answers in the comments below. <laughs> um. So okay. So we've got a a, a big upgraded six five zero two. Effectively, it's an extended six five zero two. It was so it was designed by a, a bloke called uh, Victor Android. All right. Who took a 65 ECO2, bolted some extra bits onto it, called it Victor. So on the board, it does say Victor. Right. Uh, and he actually did all right out of all of this because he went to AMD oh. after this and designed the K7. Right. So he did all right. I think he was the only one who did. <laughs> so, I mean, in terms of compatibility, there's a, there's a couple of issues I think I can see straight away. Um, okay, so it's and it, it wasn't one hundred percent compatible, was it? It was like eighty or something. Seventy, seventy oh, right. to eighty. All right, okay. Just because it was emulating. Yeah, yeah. And if you've got any well-written bog standard game, should work. Right. But obviously, by then people were taking the thing to bits. They were coding their own demos and poking bits of memory they shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Anything that did that. No. What happens? Things like fast loaders and all that kind of stuff just fell over. Copy protected. Just, right. Anything that pokes, anything that poked into the sixty five ten, expecting things to happen, wouldn't. And also taking your lovely five and a quarter inch floppy disk with your game on it, folding it in half and trying to get it into the three and a half inch slot here, probably didn't help either. No. So, so, so the whole back of compatibility thing was a little bit of a misnomer. Well, and, <laughs> and also you'd think. Well, I started out with good intentions, but they kind of. <laughs> We've got this fantastic idea, but because of cost reasons, we'll have to get rid of that, 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 and that. We've got loads of these, so we'll put them in. We want software compatibility. This has cartridge slot. Right, yep. Do you think, yep, fine, I can take my Commodore 64 cartridge, mm -hmm. bang it in. Mm -hmm. 
only to use the cartridge slot from Commodore 16. <laughs> so that limits your market. Yeah, yeah. And not only that, they weren't produced in NTSC. Okay. All the units that eventually escaped in 94 when Commodore was liquidated, mm -hmm. they're all PAL. Right. So this was only ever going to be aimed at the UK market anyway, oh, which, well, relatively speaking, is a tiny market. Yeah. Given how massive the 64 was in America. Not a lot adds up here, does it? No. As a product, in it's, terms of, you know, why would you create this thing? It is a real... I mean, I'm happy it does exist. Absolutely. And I'm really oh. happy to have one, but... <laughs> I mean, Commodore were not known for their excellent decision-making. Well, I mean, there are other stories, like the C16 and the Plus 4. I mean, I don't really know why they exist either. Um, Technically, you know, they're excellent machines. Are they the really? TED chip is excellent, but okay. unfortunately... Because it's overdriven, it's always the first thing that dies. Yeah, yeah. So you'll get tons of 16s and plus 4s, and even a 116 if you're lucky. Mm. Nine times out of ten, it'll be a dead processor or a dead chip, a yeah. dead, dead TED. Yeah, and you plug it in, you just get a black screen. Mm. You've got a carrier there, but no, nothing else going on. Yep. Nobody's home. Lights on, nobody's in. Exactly. Yeah, such a shame. But I mean, they, they did look nice, but I, I always did wonder, even at the time, so I was relatively young at the time, but even I was sitting there wondering, what, why are these coming out? They, they're not as good as a 64. And, you know, it, it, so there's, there's a couple of weird things in Commodore's history I mean, um, it, regarding how these things are. It was also, I mean, they're... Especially business machines as well, weren't they? Well, they already had the 128. CPM machine, mm -hmm. full 64 compatibility. Mm -hmm. Not business machine, emulated 64, 70 to 80 percent. They even used the DOS from the really old 8250 mm -hmm. floppy drive. And the reason given for that was it was the least buggy of all of them. Right. And they wanted to start on a fairly, fairly decent platform. It also uses the horribly uncommon, I think it says 15, 1581. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, I think, one of these known to exist. Right. And <laughs> even that's a cobbled together one. And that's for the disk drive? Yeah. That's the disk drive connection. So it could conceivably connect out to a final quarter inch drive? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So what else have we got on the back here then? So we've got DC... Oh, no, that's video. Sorry, that's so video, video connection out. out. Um, LNH, that's going to be to do with the RF. Um, what have we got here? Oh, RGB video. Stereo audio out. It's RGBI as well. Okay, All right. So uh, stereo out with your two uh, two SIDs. So it has two SID chips in it. Yep. Nice. Um, user port there. Standard user port. Right. Serial port. Yep. And then the expansion port, and which in fact turns 16. out to be a Commodore 16. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, so we've got our oh, so more around the side as well. So power supply, switch, two joysticks, two joysticks, and a reset button. You can actually run these from the power supply from a CD32. Oh, okay. <clears throat> or right. 1571. Mm -hmm. Like the Commodore 128 floppy drive. Yep. You can yep. use power supply from that as well. This is fairly standard so, so, power wise. So, so, some things they thought sensibly on. <laughs> obviously, had a lot of them on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, couldn't sell them. Um, so about, and, and again, we've got the three and a half inch drive there uh, at the uh, other side. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the rarity of this because you said the SX64 is um, uh, rocking horse poo. Uh, in comparison with this, it really isn't. Uh, no. Um, how many of these are there, do we reckon? Handful? Estimated. Um, well, this one's 30, 31. Right. So there's at least 31. Mm -hmm. But they're all different as well. Yeah, yeah. It's they're, all be that all time it's they're all different revisions. Every single, pretty much every single one that's out there is different to all the others. Mm -hmm. So this one has a fault. I can't rely on anybody else to say, yeah, I had that fault on mine, because no. different components. No, absolutely. Um, if you read around, the best resource is uh, the secret weapons of Commodore, Cameron Kaiser. Right. And he reckons there's some people are saying up to 2,000. Oh, okay. But... But very... Well, that, that was what they reckon would possibly made. Possibly, yeah. I mean, they won't exist now. Possibly. So I mean, it, it was all we're probably in double figures, really. I would think so. But just about. Hmm. Um, I mean, these things have come up on eBay before. Um, Twenty thousand euros for one at one point, uh, and then more than that. I think it was, was like eighty thousand. One of them. Well, that was a prototype. Yeah, that's the next one. I think. I think a, a standard one. I think sold for about twenty thousand euros. Eighty-one thousand euros for a prototype version. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, that and that's, is... that's not the hand-wired one. There is a hand-built one. Is it? It's uh, on a nice wooden board. <laughs> Looks like it's been in somebody's attic forever. But it's, wow. it's handwritten, hand-soldered. Hand this one has hand-soldered components in it. Uh-huh. And this is a Revision 5. Right. So... So there's obviously a lot of chopping and changing ideas throughout its, its well, it didn't really have a life, did it? But throughout the development it's phase It's like the dual it. processor um, Amiga. Um, what's that called? There's a video that Doug Haney did. Right. The day the factory closed and he went around the, the R&D shops and everybody pauses the video at the same place. <laughs> there's a dual processor board. It's like... Right, yeah. I mean, this is pretty much <laughs> the same. It would just be left on a desk somewhere. Yeah. There would have been a box of them in a, in a cupboard and the auctioneers came in to liquidate the factory and said, what's that? And we don't know. This one's got an auctioneer sticker on the bottom. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we've also got a, a little door there. There um, is. Like an Amiga. A, well, it is for a RAM expansion. It is a RAM expansion, is it? There's right. a, a yeah. couple do exist. Uh-huh. Um, so this had 128K of RAM. Now, um, Theoretical had, had, maximum was 8 meg. Right. In 64K chunks. Yeah, this is the thing. So there was always paged in, um, so that slows things down for a start. Yeah. But um, but uh, but yeah, so you could expand the RAM. Um, so now we know this is incredibly rare. Um, could we possibly have a quick gander inside? Mm. Be careful, right? Yeah. As you can tell by the, it's not the best plastic. <laughs> and I'm imagining this has been apart a number of times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It did have screws in it before we started this, so um, <laughs> it's not like it lives in bits. Yes, sadly, the warranty seal's gone. <sighs> and there's a fault with it. You could have got that done. I've started work on it, but... <clears throat> right, so, Mitsumi keyboard here for a quickly show you that. So, fairly standard keyboard with the... You'd think it'd be possible to get a replacement cap for the one that's missing, but I've only seen those keyboards on 65s. Right, okay. It, I, it looks very similar to the 128. It does, it does. But no. Shame. And they're also oddly, oddly numbered as well, so two functions on one key. Yeah. F9, F10 on one key. Right. Which is annoying. So what do we have here? So we have the floppy drive over there. That's easy to recognise. Standard floppy drive, but non-standard interface. Yeah, brilliant. Um, That's just purely the floppy controller. Mm-hmm. We've got the two SIDs. Lovely. Standard ROM. Mm -hmm. The ROM in this one's fine. So this is an EEPROM as well, obviously, again, being early early doors. Mm. They were using EEPROMs rather than uh, uh, mask ROMs. Yep. It's a standard D-Magic, I think. I don't, I'm not sure if the D-Magic is unique to this machine. Right. These two are. So you've got Victor, which is the 4510 mm -hmm. processor. Right. Bill was the, uh, the VIC-3. Bill Gardier is the bloke who designed that. So like name it after yourself, why not? That's kind of a bit of a, a, a thing with Commodore, isn't it? Yeah, the Amiga's got names against the it's, ships on the board. It's a lot of people. Um, yeah. Enterprise 64. Mm. That had... Uh, the name's just gone right out of my head. Nick and mm. Dave. Right. Nick, I've forgotten the name. Yeah, so have I, yeah, but the so, Bacon yeah. fame. Yes, <laughs> Dave Woodfield. Nick Toop. Nick Toop, that's it. So, and right. also the Jaguar, of course. The Atari Jaguar had Tom and Jerry, the two mm -hmm. DSPs. Yeah. <laughs> so then we've got, over here, we have the uh, expansion for, for RAM. Yep. Um, so this had 128K. Have you done that, I think? Yes. 128K RAM is standard. So um, I'm hoping there. that the only thing that's wrong with this, because I've, I've scoped it and logic analysed it, mm -hmm. and everything's running. There isn't anything screaming out at saying, this is your obviously dead bit. Right. But because they're standard RAM chips, that's going to be my first port of call. Mm -hmm. And I'm now probably horrifying everybody watching by saying I'm going to be working on it and everybody's going to be going, no, mm, yeah, don't touch the, it. I mean, that's an interesting thing. We come across this all the time at the museum. I mean, is it better to have it working or is it better to keep it completely original? Well, it, it did work. It, yeah, the last time I had it out on display in, admittedly, that was 2005. Right. But it did work then. Mm. And spent most of the day resetting it because everybody kept coming up and typing Go64. <laughs> Think it's a 128. Yeah. <laughs> right. Which, of course, it then did because mm. it's emulated. Yeah. Fantastic. So I would like to get it running again. And the people sort of um, Moist Sunder, uh, Ricardo Rubini, all the 
all the people from back in the sort of the nineties. I've had this since two thousand and one, so it was it was only ten years old when I got it. Right. So if it hadn't have worked, I would have been surprised. Hmm. Um, but well, just trying to get a hold of these people from old email addresses is next to impossible. Yeah, yeah. I'll I have tried cloning. You will notice it ha does have a pal for Roman Ram selection. Right. Which I have dumped and it reads all right. Mm -hmm. But trying to clone that, I have the means of doing it. I just haven't, haven't got round to it yet. Right, okay. okay. But there's nothing else on here to fail, really. Mm. All the address lines are running, all the, all the data lines are running. Right. It just gives a classic Commodore CPU not running crap screen at the beginning. And that, <clears throat> that's a shame. That is, very much so. Very much so. I mean, there's a, there's a possibility, oh, you might probably already tried it, but just by piggybacking RAM over the top of those. Uh, if yeah, you've got, I um, haven't got any like that. I think right. they're four. I don't know what they are. I mean, it depends on which way they've failed, but it... I mean, they're 32K chips, so... Hmm. I just haven't got around to buying any replacements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plenty of other things to do in life. Mm. But um, but yeah, I mean it's so so we've also got here um, C sixty four DX revision three. Oh, it's a revision three, not five. So um, yeah, nineteen ninety one, confirming the date there. Um, but there's an awful lot for for what's supposed to be a prototype machine. You've got an awful lot of names here. Mm. Fish, I know, is Terry Fisher, right? Who got involved in an awful lot of Commodore stuff. Nines, people can't remember his name, but he's mentioned on an awful lot of things, including the RAM expansion. Mm -hmm. So, they did have some of their top engineers working on this. We and need to uh, we need to reach out to them. If anybody knows any of these people, yeah. um, please do get in touch. Because um, it's you know the stories behind these things are just as important as the machines. Um, you know, to, to be able to answer the question is what was the thinking behind this? Um, you know there probably was perfectly sound reason. It may, even even if it's only sort of a uh, you know a price thing, um, yeah. sell another product. I mean looking at all the machines that are around. Um, things have changed by the early 90s, but um, but yeah, I mean, the, the 80s machines come out and you think, how, how could that have competed with what else was going on? Um, you know, Sam Coupe, that kind of thing, things, that was quite a late machine. Um, and the, thing, the thing that stopped the Sam Coupe in its tracks was the magazines saying, look at this, it's a super spectrum, it's a, mm. it's a spectrum turbo. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't as much, much more than that. Mm. If you look at some of the demos that people have written for it, fairly recently, mm -hmm. it's an amazingly capable machine. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But everybody just thought, well, it's a spectrum it's a without spectrum. colour clash and mm. discs. Mm. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, it could be the media that, that, that kibosh these things quite easily. Um, but there was just so much going on and so much competition with all these different machines, weird and wonderful ideas behind the architecture and all that sort of stuff. Um, it was hard. It, you know, you lived and died by the sword, didn't you, really, on, in, in, on a product launch. You did. Um, so, uh, I met Nick Took once. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me about the, the Acorn and Sinclair days, and it said every time, every time a new machine came out, within seconds it was on everybody's desk. In bits. In bits. <laughs> yeah. How did they do that? Why did they do that? What was the thinking behind that? Mm -hmm. And then try and build on it, which, as we know with Sinclair, is with next to no money. Mm. No, absolutely. But absolutely. Well, so there you go. Um, quite an interesting machine. I say quite, a very interesting machine. Um, Slightly worried about handling something worth possibly between <laughs> 20 and 80,000 euro. Um, oh, that need to go on the front first, I think. Need to go on the back first. Back first, right. I'll let you do that. Um, but just uh, never, bothered, never bothered connecting the keyboard back up again, because well, it's going to be in bits again before long. Um, there you go. So, actually, it's, it's, it's a nice design. Um, it, it is in keeping with um, sort of C64C style and, and Amiga and all that kind of uh, stuff. It is, but... In, oh, I can't remember what year, 80, 88, 89, probably about the same time they were designing this. Mm -hmm. Schneider of um, German Amstrad, Amstrad yeah, yeah. fame, mm -hmm. they released a, an 8088 machine called the Euro PC, mm -hmm. which looks like that. It's yeah, exactly yeah. the same form yeah. factor, same case, mm -hmm. sim similar case. Yeah. But That's obviously a PC, not a, yeah. not a games machine. No. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, how many ways can you put 
put a computer together. You know, you've got your, your keyboard layout, you've got some kind of disk drive. It's going to which has to go on the right because obviously left-handed people don't exist. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Yeah, an external one. I can say that. Yeah, yeah, an external port. Stop moaning. Um, <laughs> so uh, you couldn't buy the external floppy, but yeah, it was there. Um, yeah. So it's a very very interesting machine, and it, it just does go to show how you know these machines came about. And just failed. Somebody, before. somebody thought it was a good idea at the time. Yeah, yeah. There's so many of them as well. I mean, we at um, uh, the museum, you you think you've got everything. You know, there, there's over a thousand machines in the collection. Mm. And you think, what, what, what more could there be? You know, and, and literally every few weeks, somebody will ring up and say, "Hey, I've got an ABC XYZ." Have you got you one know? of these? Yeah. You know, one of what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not that you haven't got one. You don't even know that it exists. And it is incredible. It just shows how much stuff was going on at that time. Mm. Um, all the developments. And, and occasionally you might find one. Then in like PCW magazine, you'll, you'll find reference to it. But there's no picture. You know, it said it was available for seven grand at the time or something crazy. Then you think, yeah, um, that probably is the only one that existed. They made it's their a, prototype and never sold any. It's an excellent handbook from 1984, I think. Mm-hmm. It's like the microcomputer catalogue, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. That's got so many machines That's in there. Absolutely. You just it's flick through it and go. Yep. Like yep. I've seen a picture of one of them in the past, but never seen one in real life. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Shame. thank you very much for bringing it in. Um, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, and allow us to do this video and showing everybody um, what is quite an incredible machine. Um, yeah. Yes. And if anybody, if anybody does know anything, and particularly if you know Ricardo Rubini, then let us know, please. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for bringing it in. Thanks for no your time. Problem. Cheers. Thank you.